We left out of uh, Hillsboro Inlet this morning, I would say about 5.15. We met at the boat at 5 a.m. And um, you know, we were texting last night and I text the guys 5 a.m. at the boat and Chris hits me back with a, what are we doing again? And I'm like, we're going to catch grouper, you know? So that was, I mean, that was really our plan and our goal for the day was, you know, we wanted to, we were hoping for some red grouper, um, scamp grouper, gag grouper, snowy grouper. If it's got the name grouper in it, that's what we were really hoping for today. We're just a few guys decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida, we want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. doing a little current test here drift test current test and uh, as luck would have it we're hooked up I had just uh, backed off on my drag a little bit too this thing just ripped line out I should be an AJ so I'm actually past the strike position right now Dropping with an Innovate 8.0, a Valiant 500N SPJ. This is going to be a little bit of a fight. <laughs> Three cranks, I hit the bottom, three pitches, and bam, a massive gulp, and tug city. I'm thinking it's an AJ, but we can always hope that it's a giant grouper. But you can never complain about a massive gulp Yeah, you tug can city. never complain about tug city and a massive gulp, <laughs> especially on the first drop. I am not gaining. Look at that tug. I just love the ability to kind of like, you always got to remind yourself too, to point down and just winch him in. You know, I'm down and look at the line I'm getting back. And yeah, now Tugs I'm going to start I... winching and see what happens. See my line? So now I'm, now I'm able to do some winching. When they start tugging on you, you just stop. Let them tug, tug. Yep. Okay, he's done. Take a rest. But the cool thing about the Innovate is, come on to daddy, baby. When it hits you, I thought it was a perfect. Over here under the mother. AJ. AJ. Hold on. He is very dark color. Using a single assist hook on the top that I tied. Yeah. First fish of the day, baby. First fish of the day. Nice Almaco. Dark, beautiful, good hook set. We'll let this guy go to swim another day. I see color. You want to move your rod? Oh man, these things just don't want to come up, do they? All the way. There's color. There's color. There he is. Donkey Almaco, bro. Donkey Almaco. That's Amber. Is that Amber? No, it is Amber. Cool amber and mercury. Nothing better than getting hooked up on your first drop, man. It just adds an excitement to the day, you know? 
Nice fish. You gonna give him a kiss or what? That's a big boy. Thanks for the tug, brother. Later. So we came out here and uh, we immediately started marking, but what we were looking at is direction of the drift and the speed of the drift. And you're probably gonna not like hearing this as much as we did when we saw it, but it was 4.8 speed over ground, 4.8 knots. So we got a southerly breeze that's pushing the boat. We deployed the sea anchor and uh, that got us down to 3.8. So we were just doing some experimental drops there, hooked into a couple jacks, one really nice Almaco, one really nice Amber. But the sea anchor seems to definitely be an important tool to have today because 4.8 knots just is gonna be a tough day to jig. 3.8, you know, we might be able to deal with that and we'll, we'll keep on working to see if we can get appropriate drifts over structure and uh, remain vertical. But so far, so good. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about fighting technique and i've had some of you ask me on youtube like can you can you catch you know a hundred pound class uh tuna on the slow pitch and the answer is yes and if you look like this fish is pulling drag on me right now but i'm not lifting my reel at him i'm simply retrieving right so i'm fighting i'm fighting i'm not lifting my rod i should say i'm fighting him with the reel so as he pulls line, I stop. I stop reeling. And then when he stops pulling line, I start reeling on him again. But you can see that my, my rod is pointed down towards the water. I'm not putting any strain on this rod whatsoever. I'm fighting him with my Accurate Valiant 500N uh, SPJ. I've got this nice power handle on it. It's, it's longer than your traditional handle. So I've got some, you know, oomph. To, to reel the fish in and you know from time to time even I'll stick it right here in my hip just just to give my wrist a break but I'm never I'm never high sticking upwards on the fish so there's no chance of my rod breaking at this moment because of the way that I'm fighting this fish uh, so that's Almaco that's Almaco. Almaco. yeah you see how the you see the dorsal fin sticks up real high. That's how you can tell the difference between the uh, Almaco and the Amberjack. Uh, so we're gonna let this guy go back into the ocean. See ya. Cool. What are you working with here, Will? I'm working with 400 gram jig with my uh, Phoenix Kagan 300C Power 4 Pro Jigger. And I got slammed one pole off the bottom. And it's just sitting down there. Like, could this be a grouper sitting down there? All right? Coming up. I see Jack. Grouper! Grouper! Yeah, baby! Scamp! Yeah! Nice, nice scamp! Oh, oh. oh, I hate these freaking scamps. Oh, they're, oh, yeah. They're just, if you catch one of these just guys, give them to us. just throw them back in the water and mark the coordinates and send them over. Yeah, the fish, well. I am so pleased with this fish. <laughs> There's nothing better <laughs> It's been a minute since I caught a nice scamp like out on the anchor. It is not a beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Beautiful fish, bro. As we go on our first drift, 
uh, Will decides to switch over to the electric, um, it's a lot easier for him. He doesn't quite have the, the gusto that Chris and I have uh, anymore. So it's a great option for him to stay out here and, and keep up with us uh, uh, young bucks per se um, out here fishing. And he gets tight, Will gets tight on the electric reel and pulls up my favorite, my number one uh, tasty fish. He gets a nice scamp grouper to the boat and then Will catches another grouper. You know, I was going to comment on this on my earlier one, but you know, when you get older, you're out here all day. It's tiring for anyone, young man, uh, old man, anybody. But it sure is nice to be able to use the electric when you're dropping quite a bit. Reel that floater? baby oh, yeah. in. Oh, we got a floater! What is it? Snowy. Snow? Yeah, it is. That's a snowy? Oh, yeah. Nice snowy. That's a big one, too. Right? Nice snowy. Oh. Biggest snowy I've ever seen. Oh. No, I think the biggest. Oh, snow. on the flatback. On the flatback 300. Flatback 300. Thank you, Mr. Beautiful, snow. man. Yeah. Hey, look at this, this snowy grouper. This is a snowy grouper that Will just caught on the flatback uh, 300 gram jig. Okay. And tick. Take a look at what's inside his mouth. If we can get it out here. Yeah, what color is he's it? He's eating crab. Kind of brownish pink. He's eating crab. Oh yeah, he is. How cool is that? That's his last crab dinner he's ever gonna have. And then Will catches another grouper, and it was like Chris and I are sitting at the, you know, sitting with our jig in the water, like, all right, Crane, all right, you know, because he's he, he it was his time. He was it was due time for for Will to have a great day and we're very happy for him but as much as as we love Will we like catching grouper as well so um, as we got you know I would say like around 11 o'clock um, I dropped down a 300 gram jig and I'm noticing I'm watching Will after he caught those three grouper and I noticed that he's using a torpedo jig he's getting down fast and then as soon as he's hitting the bottom he's giving it a few quick rips up and then and then dropping it back down and every time that he hooked up he was doing that you know technique so i mimicked him um don't tell him don't tell him but i did exactly what he did i i dropped it down i gave it a couple quick rips and boom i was hooked up and hooked up baby right on the bottom guys just a couple pitches real quick one as soon as i tap bottom uh, hooked up Coming up like a nice one. I think it's the right flavor. Oh, we got color. Oh! No way. oh. Nice stuff. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, I'm way in the gill. Look at that. Oh, John, that's beauteous. Look at that. Nice fish, bro. Nice snow. If you look, I had just just one uh, one hook in them, but it's a deep. It's a deep set and these hooks are really sharp so it actually looks like I'm I'm penetrating a bone there and I've got him down pretty deep. He's got some stuff in his mouth. Let's see what he's eating guys. Let's see what this is. Take a look at it. Ooh. Oh that's a squid. That's a squid huh? It's like almost digested. It looks like he kind of spit it up on the way up. But uh beautiful man. These fish uh, they eat very well. They're delicious. It's called a snowy grouper. And uh, that's why we came here. We really we were looking for scamp grouper, snowy grouper, um, any type of grouper for that matter. But uh, I am very happy. Uh, from the first drift was like 350 into three is when uh, Will hooked up with that scamp grouper man, and we knew we were in the territory. We we already knew we were in the territory. It was just the morning of the jacks and then uh once we caught that scamp grouper uh there was only one more jack caught and even a massive the biggest aj of the day by by will he blows well done, how's it feeling it feels like a fish that was on the bottom Hold on. Let me get that my time to shine baby <laughs> hooked up i'm using our torpedo man i had a flat back on most of the morning and Will, Will, Will boated a scamper and two snowies on a torpedo. So guess what I did? Switched over to a torpedo. Even though the flatback was still pink, 
both jigs 300 grams doesn't mean i wouldn't have caught a fish with the flat back but sometimes when you're out here for long hours it just like cycle through your different jigs get to know them all better name them you know it's important to name them it was a redrop on the bottom the nothing on the first bounce a uh, couple bounces quick up redrop right back in his face and this is what we got color we got color oh snowy yeah, it's barely hooked Oh, the bottom hook got him. What? Yeah, bottom hook. That was a redrop, and you can see too. Look at the yeah, a little bit of pull there. You know, I sat on him. I haven't had a strike in a while. Granted, the the tip of the hook is in the bottom lip as well, but you can see, you know, when you get that separation in the in the lip, and they shake and they sometimes go away. That gives you a good idea why why. And uh, we were able to catch that scam grouper and a total of five snowy groupers of which we released with the descending tool. Um, we were hoping to find another another grouper species, you know, uh, out there, but the snowies kept coming up really for Will. Will caught three of them and the scamp and the big AJ. So uh, if this was a mini tournament, he would have been taking pretty much all the Calcuttas. Uh, but nonetheless, John and I each boated a, a snowy and some some nice Almacos and AJs, and it was just it was just you know great day. <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. You know, on this trip, uh, exploring you know new fishing territory. The big learning experiences here. Just just go and and like Captain Greg on the Yankee Caps uh, trips are look, learn, and find. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube. Instagram, check out the TikTok. We've been having fun with that. And most importantly, jig on.